when looking at students in Kim K coaching, what would you say are the major contributors to why these students may have filled boards that kind of like pop out to you? My name is Andreas, and this uh, podcast, we're going to be chatting with Kim, fellow KMK teammate, Dr. Jordan Keith. How are you doing, Jordan? Good. Good to be here. Good, good. So uh, I'm excited to talk to you more about this thing that we've launched a few years ago that is now growing up some steam. So let's talk about, you know, what is KMK Coaching? KMK Coaching is a solution to a problem optometry students have had for decades. Um, when students can't pass boards or struggle to pass boards and they need more help beyond from what they have, there was nothing. Um, there have been students for a long time that have wanted a little more help with tutoring. And the challenge was always finding a tutor, one, and two, finding enough tutors to cover all the content. And um, so KMK Coaching was created for, with that in mind to help people that struggle with boards, give them access to what we call coaches that mm -hmm. cover all the content with boards. Um, and also a community for them to realize that they're not alone because so many students, when they fail boards, they think they're the only one that has failed boards, not realizing that they probably have 10, 20 people in their class, potentially even that also struggled with boards. And so, this is a place for students that have struggled the boards to come get help, get coaching and be within a community and help them pass boards. Yeah, no, that's great. And, um, you know, I'm glad you, you mentioned, um, about how, you know, they're not alone. Um, because I mean, I'm sure you, you can test to this, but, um, you know, for example, like on, I'll get emails or Instagram messages from students saying, Oh, I filled boards for the second time. Like, what do I do now? And, you know, and they're, kind of panicking and saying like, this is like, you know, I'm going to fall behind. I'm going to fail. Meanwhile, like we get those emails a lot from pay from students that have failed three, four, or maybe five times. So, um, the yeah. fact that we have a, a community for, um, for other students so that they're not alone is, is fantastic. What would, uh, like if somebody asked you like, okay, how does that entail? Like, what does that entail? Or what's, what's, what's the, I guess the skeleton of Kim K Goshen? We spent, a full year trying to think about what students that fail boards need and then created the infrastructure for it. Um, a lot of us, including you, when students pass, didn't pass boards, they would contact KMK and say, I want a tutor. And if some of us KMK instructors were not busy enough, we might take a student here or there. Um, but the problem is we could only help maybe five or 10 students a year. Yeah. And most students couldn't get help. So um, KMK coaching the, at the core of this program is small group coaching. And that's where we pair three students with one coach to meet weekly and to go over an area of focus that they are struggling with the most. So, for instance, a lot of students struggle with anatomy or pharmacology or optics. Students can pick an area of focus and spend 25 hours digging into that area of focus that they're weak, weakest in, meeting weekly with their coach in groups of three, going through that content um, to make sure that their lowest area is elevated. And one thing that students say all the time, not all the time, but sometimes students say, oh, I, I just want one-on-one -on -one tutoring. I don't, mm -hmm. don't wanna be in a small yeah. group. And the reason behind having a ratio of three to one is three to four to one, depending on our kind of the group, our size of our group is the best way for students to learn is by teaching others. It's at the bottom of the learning pyramid. It's where we learn the best if we can teach others. And you can't do that when you're just one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And when you're in three in one group, um, those students can essentially teach their colleagues the content that they are going through. And it also allows us to help more students. If we did one-on-one, -on -one, we still would fall short by severely of the number of students need help on boards. Even now, three to one, we are still not helping yeah. all the students that want help. So small group coaching is kind of the core of the program to help students get a coach, 
help teach their colleagues, help push each other and motivate them. It's by far the favorite part of the students when they go through the coaching program. Yeah, no, I, that's, that's one of the things that um, I really like about coaching and I, and I initially I was curious to see what would happen because, you know, before coaching was a thing, you know, we, you know, you and me and others, you know, we're only do one on two students at a time. And there was a time where I was coaching three students. And not only was that like a, you know, hectic part of my schedule, but I remember you'd email me like, Hey, can you take two more? And I'm like, I, I physically can't. Um, and so from a convenience standpoint, it is nice, you know, coaching more students at once. But then, you know, I did also think, okay, how, how would the, the, the dynamics be when you, I'm going from coaching one student to coaching three or four. And oh. it's just like a night and day where like the, the students are just more engaging. Sometimes I do a one-on-one -on -one and like they wouldn't really say anything or they'd be having a question, but not sure how to articulate it. But then when you're coaching three students, you know, everybody has the same question, but one person articulates it great or one person has a comment or has a question. And then the second student either answer that. And now they have a teaching moment or they're like, you know what? I never thought about that question. So it's definitely yes. a lot of, a lot of collaboration going on there. And, you know, you might've seen some of your groups. I saw with one of mine where, you know, those same three students would meet up on their own time <laughs> yes. um, over Zoom to study more. And so I think that was very, very effective. And one of the things that, you know, like you said, it's, it's a staple or a favorite um, of students that have been doing co coaching so far. So there, there, There's always a moment where you, when thinking of how to build something, you think, oh, this seems like the way we want to go. And if it wouldn't have worked, we would have changed it, but it's worked really well. Um, mm -hmm. it, it All the reasons you just mentioned is powerful being in a small group of students all in it together, not only to be able to hear other questions from other students and also to teach their colleagues, but some of the most successful small groups meet as a group on their own outside of their sessions. And you can't do that one-on-one. -on -one. Th those small groups push each other and it's really cool to see the ones that mesh well. Mm -hmm. So um, when, you know, since now you you, you basically co-founded the co King of Coaching and you, you've been You've been monitoring, not only have you been coaching students, but you also been monitoring the whole process every every season. Um, so when when looking at students in Kim K coaching, what would you say are the major contributors to why these students may have felt boards that kind of like pop out to you? Yeah, that that is always the question we hear over and over again from students is I've read the book a hundred times, I've watched yeah. every video, I don't know what else I can do to be more prepared. And the number one reason why we see people fail boards, and this might sound crazy to uh, the students listening to this, is just not knowing how to learn. And you might be saying, well, how did I get through high school and undergrad and optometry school without knowing how to learn? <laughs> and the difference is, uh, we say this all the time at KMK, preparing for boards is a marathon, not a sprint. And every exam that these students have taken up to this point are sprints. You can cram the night before and and get your way through it. And that's not the way boards is. Boards, you have to integrate everything, all three years of school into one cohesive story to be able to answer those questions correctly. And way too many students that struggle to, to pass boards spend too much time at the top of the learning pyramid, just reading their book and watching videos. Mm -hmm. They don't spend enough time on the bottom of the pyramid um, by quizzing themselves and practicing or elaborating things out loud or teaching others, which is why we created small group coaching as the core of the program. It does mm -hmm. all of that. Another common thing we ask is just not asking for help early enough. Um, what's so sad is to see students struggle on boards, four or five attempts and not seeing their score go up at all. And then they come to us on their sixth and final attempt. And it it's really hard for some students to get over that barrier after taking it five or six times. So. Um, another one is just not asking for help early enough, uh, not mm -hmm. recognizing early enough that they need help. Another thing we see sometimes is, and, and this is, I think, less common, but students coming in just saying, well, I'm, I'm just not going to study optics because I'm never going to be good at optics. Or I, I just skipped anatomy because it was just too difficult. And as you know, Andreas, you can't skip anything. Especially <laughs> anatomy, one of the people. biggest. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes students get this roadblock up where they're just like, I I'm never gonna get good at this. And 
that's a fixed mindset. And so part of the coaching program is also to help students have more of a growth mindset and mm -hmm. make them realize that this might be difficult, but yes, you can do this. Another common one is just too much going on. Some students just don't put the time in that's necessary to pass this. Um, it takes mm -hmm. time, a lot of time commitment. You have to physically hurt to pass boards. I, I know <laughs> you can remember what it was like preparing for boards, but I mean, they're, they're early mornings, they're late nights. It takes a lot of commitment. You have to say no to a lot of things that normally you would do. And um, so some students just have too much going on. They don't say no enough to things that and not yes enough to boards. And especially those students that are on their fourth attempt or more, I think a lot of it is just losing sight of the big purpose as to why they're even doing it. It, it mm -hmm. becomes very difficult to constantly gear up and, and become mentally prepared enough and have enough stamina to study hard enough to pass boards. And so another part of the coaching program, what's so important about being in the community um, within the optometry network, we have our own space within the optometry network where only student, only coaching students are there is they get to interact with us coaches. They get to interact with success coaches who are students that fail boards that then passed, who are on our mm -hmm. team now to help push students that yes, I know this is difficult, but you can do this. And, and our encouragement is to help give them that purpose back to make them realize this is why it's worth passing. This might be hard, but this is why it's worth pushing through this because yeah. being an optometrist and take care of patients is the best feeling ever. No, no, and it really is. And it's um, it's amazing to see how, you know, you have these students, like I said, may fail three or four or five times. And because they're doing the same thing every time and failing, then they feel like they can't pass boards where it could be something simple as either mentality tweak or even as simple as like, all right, let's fine tune these topics. Like I always do the, the retina test where it's like, Hey, draw me all 10 layers of the retina. And, you know, I'll ask that to a student that failed three or four times, um, failed board three or four times, but like knows everything about clinic seems pretty bright, but then yeah. you have them draw and they're like, four of them are mixed up. And that's like, that's like at least, I don't know, six, 10 questions. Cause retina is so big and something yes. simple tweak like that. It's like, Oh, like, okay, well maybe if you, instead of, try to read the book again, or maybe watch a, you know, maybe watch a video or take the booster course or just, just do something, something different or get quizzed by another student, do something to kind of see, all right, well, this is where the, the, the tweaks need to be made. And, you know, if you don't really know how to do it, that's what's awesome about coaching where we guide you in this, in the sense of, Hey, here's how to get the content better, or actually here's how to think about it differently, or even here's how to think about, you know, growth mindset that like, you're not, you know, you can pass boards. I mean, you've, you know, you've, you've done everything else, you know, you've gone through optometry school. It's just that mental roadblock of not wanting, not like either not wanting to try hard or being anxious about trying hard because you don't want to fail or just having this, this weird roadblock that, you know, can be corrected. So, and that's, what's so hard about when you, about failing boards, when you fail boards, when you start retaking these, you're on your own on fourth year. Now mm. you're, you're not with other classmates. Um, you're not around faculty anymore. And so you, you don't have a lot of live lecture left. And that's why it's so important that these small group coaching are live. You physically are in front of someone, your coach and your colleagues, you got to bring it every week. And if you don't, you're going to look silly. And it's that live factor that makes coaching so great. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, for, it, it, there's a, a level of accountability you have to bring every week because it's live and, and that's why we also, as part of the program, we have community live. Um, a lot of these students have not been in the classroom for sometimes a year, two or five or even 10 years. And so community live every weekend, they get three hours of live content by a coach covering things that they went over in that week's signature. So if signatures are viewing anatomy, um, that weekend, there's a coach covering anatomy for three hours. And then the next weekend, physiology. Um, it's allowing students to have live content in a community mm -hmm. of students just like them. That's made this successful. Yeah, no, in community, that's, that's, that's probably one of my, probably my favorite part. Well, one of my favorite part about the whole coaching process, because you have an idea of, all right, this is anatomy, this is community live. I'm going to go in and review probably, you know, cornea or retina or, you know, whatever, whatever the, the topic is. And then I go there and then by hour three, we're in like, 
I don't know, we're in like um, uveitis or <laughs> we're in something like completely different because you see how the whole classroom as a whole is kind of guiding this lecture and they're all having the questions. They're all feeding each other. And just like, I feel like each weekend is almost like, all right, this is way more productive than being in school <laughs> because yeah. I, it, yeah. it feels more interactive than being in the classroom because I feel like a lot of times in the classroom and graduate school is just the professor is doing a lecture and we're all kind of sitting there and people are kind of being shy or, or not as collaborative when here it's like, everybody's had the same motive. Like, Hey, we've all filled boards, but no more of that. We all got to go in hard. And it's, it's, yeah, it's really, yeah. Coaching is awesome. And it's really, really great, great thing that, um, that we've made here. So it is, I, you know, we, the years before coaching happened, us as a team might've helped 10 people with mm -hmm. that are struggling on boards, maybe 10 a year. And now the coaching program, as we've built it up the last, um, you know, two years or so, we're going to help over a hundred students this year, which is amazing. Yeah. And, you know, now that we've been in the, in the program long enough, we've got really strong data as to how students mm -hmm. are doing. And on average, when students fail boards and retake boards by themselves, they only go up by an overall score of about 13. And coaching students are increasing their overall scores on average by over 100. And that is impressive. Wow. Yeah. That's it's, it's impressive. Yeah. So, yeah. So before coaching, you said about 16 points, you said on average? About 13. They usually, the way it goes is from attempt one to two, they have a the biggest chance at making a bump. And it makes sense, right? You, you just failed, like, oh, I'll get this the next time. Yeah. So they might go up 20, maybe 15. But then as each attempt goes, that increase gets smaller and smaller. Usually yeah. those last few attempts between four or five or five or six, like it, some most students are level or some go down even. I some mean, go down, yeah. there's only so much you can push yourself. I mean, it's, it's really hard mm -hmm. when you're struggling with something to get over it by yourself. And that again is why we created coaching. You don't, students don't have to go at this exam alone anymore. Yeah. They have, they have us. Yeah. And so they go from average 13, something sometimes going down to then they take coaching and then you said average is a hundred points. Yes. And yeah. some students, um, Way some students go over two or 300 overall. Um, some don't yeah. go up as much. That's an average. And right. You know, students still, um, students still need to come to this program and work hard. And the ones that buy in and they they dig into the learning tips, which every Tuesday we give them a learning tip to make sure that they're learning in the right way. Mm -hmm. Those that dig in thrive. Their scores explode. And, you know, sometimes you see these scores, you're just like, whoa, they had this in them all along. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> and some students, though, the ones that we see don't increase as much. They either got too much going on or something came up or some students think that just being in coaching alone is enough. And it's, it's, that's the other thing that we try to remind them within the program is no, like you still got to work hard. You still got to mm -hmm. sit down and put the time in. It's not just about showing up to these events. You also got to put the time in and, but those that do, it's incredible. One of the two best days of the year for yeah. KMK coaching when board scores come out. I mean, it's life changing when you get that text message or phone call from them. Yeah. No, it's amazing. But yeah, essentially it's kind of like, you know, kind of like being a personal trainer. It's like, you can only guide your client to do, you know, to do these exercises or just get in their nutrition. Yes. But you know, if they don't put the work in, like they're not going to get anywhere, but then if they do, and then you watch them six months later and they have that before and after picture, there's like, Oh my God, that's amazing. Yes. You know, you, you know, and then the, you see a testimonial just like, Oh, this, this, in my whole 20 years, I've never felt this good or something my whole 30 years. And so it's kind of the, the same, the same token where it's like, you know, we're giving everybody the tools, but, you know, they have to work in, they have to work at it. But when they do, when we get those past texts, it's like, you know, especially if they fail them multiple times, then it, it, it's definitely a great, a great feeling. You know, great I think one work. of the things about looking at the data now, that has been interesting to me. I just figured those that were on their fourth, fifth or sixth attempt would have a lower shot at passing than those that only failed one, two or three times. And that mm -hmm. data is not accurate. Whether it's your first, your second attempt, or your sixth, their chance of passing with coaching is the same. Um, the mark that matters is what their overall score is coming in. Um, mm -hmm. If their overall score is under 200, um, there's a decent chance they might pass, but it's not nearly as high as 200 or above, which makes sense. On average, yeah. students go up by over 100 points. More so, progress, yeah. Man, when I see a score report where their overall score is 200 plus, I'm like, oh, man. 
they have a really good shot at passing, which yeah, is tell them just a little nudge, you know, and then that's right. Great. And so, you know, obviously Kim Kiko is awesome and we're all going to keep doing this. Um, you know, the demand seems to be going up because it's in high need, but at the same time, you know, it, you know, it would be nice if we could do something to prevent that from happening in the first place. You know, one for demand right. and for two, because every time somebody fails board is a tragedy. So, um, you know, given how, you know, they've gone through the whole program. So, Jordan, knowing why these students have failed boards, um, if there's any advice you could tell part one students today, anyone that are watching this, they haven't may have not taken boards yet, to help prevent them from having to go into Kim K coaching um, in the first place. You know, what kind of advice? And we may have touched on it a little bit, but um, what advice would you would you would you add with? The biggest thing is not to start too late. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like. I've moved, we've all moved, right? So many times, um, packing and moving stinks. And it's just like moving. If you start <laughs> moving too late and you have a deadline, like it, you're, you're stressed, you're panicked, you're just not healthy. So it's kind of like packing. You got to start early, slowly chip away at this. So the biggest thing is start early. Um, KMK has been doing this for almost 20 years now. We do things for a reason. And that's why sticking to the plan is so important and trying not to get behind. But it's also why we launched KMK TV, which mm -hmm. is new this year. And we've learned so much in, in coaching the last two years now, so much about how to learn and what it means to learn well, that we just felt like, man, it's great that the coaching students now getting this, but we really ought to be sharing this information with the entire country before they even take boards. And so, the whole point of KMK TV is to show students what total domination of preparing for boards looks like. Mm -hmm. You might know your anatomy well, and you might feel like you know your physiology well, but how well can you integrate them? And mm -hmm. how well can you integrate that into disease and into pharmacology? So KMK TV is designed to show students what integration of topics look like, to be able to elaborate on what they've learned from memory without looking at a book. And we're also interweaving our learning techniques into them called the dominates. And that is the eight biggest things we feel are necessary to learn boards um, the right way the first time so that it, it sticks to long-term memory. So we're excited to bring KMK TV episodes to everybody yeah. across the country so that you get a little taste of what we've been doing within coaching. Yeah. And the, the, Active learning stuff is exciting too, because some of these, like, I feel like I was never really told about that in grad school. And I feel like it should be like talked about like in high school, you know, like when we were yeah, first learning. And so it's just, yeah, it, it's crazy. Um, so many students learn the right way naturally, but a lot, a really high percentage of them just don't. And the analogy I like is for students that are like, well, what is active learning again? Like, I'm just struggling. I've looked at the learning pyramid and I just don't know what it means. Um, you know, it, I've owned a home now for five, six years, and I've become very handy. You kind of have to be. And I always mm -hmm. tell them, well, passive learning is like wanting to fix something in your house and or anything and going to YouTube and watching a video on it being like, oh, man, I feel like a master. Well, no, that, that's passive learning. You just watched a video, like get your hands, go grab some tools and try to go do it yourself. And I guarantee you, you might feel like a master, but man, you're terrible until you get your hands on it and start practicing and doing it over and over again. And so active learning mm -hmm. is actually going to buy those tools and materials and trying to do it yourself and then doing it again and then doing it again to mm -hmm. the point where you can do it from memory that's what active learning is um, when you're doing things with your hands. It's also the same thing you should do when you're trying to learn something new, putting your books away, shutting off the computer, and just in your mind, working through that material mentally over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then a general, that's fantastic. And then a general example of that, that we see with students, like it's March time, you know, they have boards, boards in two, three weeks. And they're just yep. passively reading the book or watching the videos. And that's where it's like, all right, now you're answering questions. Now you're integrating things. Now you're doing things um, differently and, and trying to recall information. And, you know, and uh, yeah, so it's exciting things with KMK TV and KMK coaching. Um, yeah, it seems to be, you know, very successful in helping uh, students on their path to passing boards and then moving on to life so they can see all those patients and, you know, have, have a 
we wish that there was no such thing as KMK coaching. Yeah, obviously. exactly. We wish, we wish that everyone passed boards. And the reality is, um, you know, boards is not designed for everyone to pass. That's the whole point of a standardized test. It, it is to be difficult enough to put the profession on a bell curve. And, um, you know, life events come up for students. Some of the, some of the stories we hear from students are really sad about the things that they go through that gets them behind or they didn't learn the right way. There's all kinds of reasons why people don't pass boards, but it is so exciting now to tell patients that are struggling, hey, you're not alone. You don't have to go with this alone anymore. We've got a program designed just for you now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing that is so important for students to understand as well is every time you don't pass boards, you lose out on about $60,000 of revenue. Yeah. You know, the, if the average OD salary is about 120,000, which is about average, um, every time you fill boards, you lose out on $60,000 of revenue. So, you know, we always encourage students get help early. If it's mm -hmm. not with coaching, that's fine, but ask for help, get help early, change things up as quick as you can, because you don't want to delay passing boards. Um, it's a big deal to, to, to miss out on that revenue. Um, student loans start coming in. I mean, the stress level gets really high. Yeah, no, for sure. A hundred percent. Well, I think that's all we got today. That was some great information. Um, thanks Jordan for, you know, tuning in and, uh, giving us your insight. Um, and, uh, yeah, man, just have, have a good rest of your day. And you bet I, at another school or at the KMK retreat or something, something. I hope, I, I hope this podcast helps even just one person. Yeah, um, exactly. Overcome board. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a huge win.